Audi R8 values are great, at least for most models. Some models are clearly lacking compared to the market trend and definitely when you compare it to one of its main competitor, the 911. The R8 has been with us for quite some time and it has been produced in many forms. The first generation came with a V8 and a V10 and both models are frequently tipped as future classics. Especially the manuals receive a lot of love. Later in the video we will have a look at the price trend for both engines and check if the manuals increased more than the automatics. Now more recently we got the second generation and also that one was received with good reviews. Though compared to some of its rivals it was classified as the less driver focused car of the bunch. Additionally, the Audi badge misses a bit of status when you compare it to let's say a Porsche or a McLaren. But is this detrimental to R8 values? All of that and more we will find out in this video as we will have a look at the value development over time. And like I said before, some models are clearly lacking behind. But as always we will first have a look at the current US market. In total there are 318 cars for sale and you can see that we have quite some models. I split the graph by the V8 and V10 models, the generation and the model types. So the base, class and performance. Now when we look at the prices we can see that there's quite a lot of variation. That's not a surprise. With $79,000 the V8 offers the cheapest entry point to the market. Yet you will get an R-Tronic for this money. If you want a clean manual you need to spend around $100,000. Now when we look at the facelift models we can see that everything becomes a little bit more expensive. An automatic V8 starts at $95,000 while manuals go for $106,000. And these manuals are scarce. Supply over the last few years fluctuated between 3 and 5 cars. Moving on with the V10s we can see that the first gen pre facelift cars cost around $111,000 and that this makes them $21,000 more expensive than the V8. But that's not all. Prices for the manuals are extortionate. These tend to cost around $160,000. So that's a 60k premium over a V8 manual. Now looking at the second generation we can see that this is also the price level at which you will find the plus models. Moreover, with $160,000 you can also consider to buy a second gen car. Prices for a based second generation car start at $150,000 but stretch up all the way to $180,000. And hereby they are $27,000 cheaper than the plus model. The plus models go for around $187,000 and hereby overlap with the facelifted base models. You need to bring around $200,000 if you want one of them and $22,000 more if you want the performance model. I guess the moral of the story over here is that there's a significant overlap in the prices. So there's enough choice for every budget. And with that we're up to date on today's market and it's time to have a look at the value development over time. How did prices arrive at today's value? And more importantly, is the market still trending up? Many sports and supercar markets have flattening price trends. Well, I can already reveal that R8 values are strong, but that there is one market segment where prices are clearly underperforming compared to the market trend. We start with the oldest V8 model and then work our way up to the latest generation. Over here we have the medium price trends for the pre-facelift and facelifted V8s. And you can see that they look quite decent. Compared to August 2019, prices for the facelifted ones increased by 20% and prices for the pre-facelifted ones increased by 25%. So the older cars clearly have the upper hand and this mainly results from a dip in the facelift market. You can see that they decreased between August 2019 and November 2020, while pre-facelifts already started to increase. Now the crucial question over here is of course, did these cars perform worse or better than a 911? Let's insert them in the graph. Over here we have now both V8s and the 991.1 and 997.2 Carrera S. Let's start with the two at the top. You can see that I don't have the exact same dates, so it will be a rough comparison. But this will do for now. We just saw that the V8s increased by 20% and this is, I kid you not, the exact same increase as what we have in the 911 market. If we would have looked at the same dates, the numbers might have been a bit different, but I think it's fair to conclude that the two cars appreciated by approximately the same rate. But what about the older ones? The pre-facelifts increased by 25% and that's a good result, but it's not as much as the increase in the 911 market. The 911s increased by a shocking 39%. And truth be told, it's not a complete fair comparison, as the first 911 data point is from April 21. Exactly. This is just when the pandemic got serious and the uncertainty in the market was very high. Prices might have been a bit lower, leading to a larger overall increase. Also, the overall quality in the market increased slightly more in the 997.2 market, meaning that the median mileage is lower than in April 2020. In the R8 market it's actually slightly higher. However, 
The difference between the two cars is so large that I think it's fair to conclude that the 997.2 increased more than the first gen V8. But the actual difference is likely to be less extreme than what you see over here. Nevertheless, I think that the results are very good for the R8. The 911s belong to the group of sports cars that went up in value the most, so the fact that the facelifted V8 matches it is excellent. But also the result of the pre-facelifts is decent. A 25% increase is on par with most other cars. The increase in the 911 market is just extremely high. But is there any difference between the manual and the automatic R8s? Well, yes. Over here we have the full V8 market split by transmission type. And the reason that we are looking at the full market is that there are only a few manuals for sale. Usually there are around 20 manuals advertised for sale. Now when we look at the prices, we can see that the automatics increased by 21.5%, while the manuals increased by 30.7%. So the manuals definitely increased a lot more. Now when we look at the shape of the price trends, we can see a few interesting things. First of all, the trend for the manuals does not look like the S-shaped one of the automatics. And the reason for this is simple. Prices at September 21 are slightly subdued as the cars that were for sale back then had a high mileage. Second, we can see that the manuals started off below the automatics, but are now priced above them. And that's quite an achievement if you consider that the manuals are one to two years older. In any case, if you own a V8, I think you can be happy with the value development. Regardless if it's a pre-facelift, facelift, manual or automatic, values moved with the market trend, or in case of the manuals might have even exceeded the market increase. But we talked now for quite some time about the V8 market, and that means that it's time to move on to the V10 market. But before we do so, if you enjoyed this video, please support the channel by clicking on the like button down below. Thank you. So then, the V10 market. Let's start with the first generation. Over here we have the price trend for the pre-facelifts in orange and the facelifted ones in blue. We can see that the price trends are very similar. Prices decreased slightly during 2020 after which they started to increase. Looking at the price changes, we can see that pre-facelifts performed slightly better. They increased by 22.1% versus 14.6% for the facelifts. Yet the difference can be attributed to the mileage development. The pre-facelift cars that are for sale only saw an increase of 3000 miles, while this is 10,000 miles for the facelifted ones. Also, it is important to mention that supply for the pre-facelifted cars decreased consistently, while it remained flat for the facelifted ones. Now just as we did with the V8 market, let's compare these price trends to the 911. Over here we have in blue the trend for the 911.1 Turbo and Turbo S's, and in orange the one for the 997.2 Turbo and Turbo S's. And we can see now that the 97.2 turbos increased by 24.6% and that the 991.1s increased by 20.9%. So compared to the 15 and 22% in the R8 market, I think that the Audi R8s are performing quite decent. We can see that 997 prices were a bit more stable to begin with. Prices didn't dip since September 2019, while Audi R8 prices decreased during 2020. But did the manuals increase more than the automatics? Unfortunately, it's very difficult to say in the V10 market. Compared to the V8, manual supply is extremely low and this makes it difficult to get a reliable price estimate. A quick look at the split between the automatics and the manuals reveals that manuals appear to have increased much more. But this price point over here is based on only 7 cars with a low mileage. Nevertheless, if you own a first generation V10, I think you can be quite happy with the value development. The increase is roughly aligned with the 911 turbo market, a car that is known for its strong residuals. So what about the latest generation V10s? Well, as you might have guessed by now, things are slightly different over there. The value development in some segments is rather disappointing. Let's have a look, shall we? Over here we have from top to bottom the price trends for the used performance model, facelifted base model, the plus and the pre-facelifted base model. And only the quattro cars are included. Now when we look at the increase, we can see that there is a clear distinction between the pre-facelifted cars and the facelifted ones. The older base and plus cars increased by 27 and 29% and hereby show an excellent performance. The newer base and performance cars increased by 12.2 and 10%. Now in isolation this is of course an excellent increase. After all, we need to remember that we're talking about a V10 luxury supercar. Yet, the increase is disappointing when compared to the rest of the market. And this becomes evident when we compare it to the 911 prices. Over here I inserted the prices for the 991.2 Turbo and Turbo S and compared them to the facelifted second generation R8s. If we look at the price increase, 
we can see that it is much higher in the 911 market. Prices over there increased by 19% for the base models and by 19.5% for the S models. That's almost double the increase that we can see in the performance market. I by the way also had a look at the 992 turbo market, but that's not really a fair comparison as the prices are much higher than they are for the R8. So where is this price difference coming from? Well, it's always tricky to tell from just the data, but there are two things to take into account here. First of all, supply for the R8s has been increasing consistently during this period, while supply for the 911s dropped drastically during 2020 and then slowly recovered. Also, the used R8s that were on the market in January 2020 had an extremely low mileage. Most of them had less than 1000 miles. And as we all know, it are those first 1000 miles that are the most expensive. The depreciation per 1000 miles curve is the steepest over there. So those two aspects, an increasing supply and a high mileage sensitivity might explain the low price increase. Nevertheless, the price increase in the second generation facelifted Audi R8 market falls short to the price increase in the Porsche 911 market and to the price increase that we saw in the older R8 markets. Moreover, the increase is also low when compared to other cars that are analyzed on the channel. If you're a subscriber, you know that 10% is really low. So value-wise, that might have caused some regrets. And with that, it's time to wrap up and conclude. Why would you regret the purchase of an Audi R8 and why wouldn't you? This is a channel about car values, so naturally, we attack this question from a value perspective. We looked at the price trends for all R8s, and saw that all cars, with exception of the most recent facelifted V10s, increased approximately by the same rate as the market trend. And that's definitely a good result. Especially if you consider that Audi doesn't have the same status as let's say a Porsche. You can call it batch snobbery, and that's perhaps the correct way to label it, but these things affect values one way or another. When we looked at the most recent V10s, we saw that the price increase rate was much lower than in the turbo market, and in that way it is regrettable at least from a value perspective. Other cars, not just the 911 Turbo, saw a much larger price increase. And with that, we arrived at the end of this video. Now, if you enjoy this data-driven way of analyzing car markets, but would have liked to see the analysis for a different car, let me know for which car you would like to see an analysis. You can comment it down below in the comment section. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you next week for a new video.